What's up guys? Sanguine here. So I've finally done it. I've finally pushed out my model 1887 guide. And I know some of you have been waiting for it. And I know others have been seemingly foaming out of the mouth for it. So let's not stall and waste any more time. Let's jump right into it. So first things first, let's talk about the basics of this gun. The model 1887 shotgun is a gun that is best characterized as the flashy shotgun that has become a household favorite amongst the shotgun community. That is because out of all the weapons in the medium class, well, besides the revolver and the FAMAS, it is the main weapon that you could pull off crazy high damage shots and insane movement with. The Model 1887 shotgun functions very much so like a true to form shotgun, enabling the user to fire off six high damage shots that can hit up to 128 damage. At 128 damage per shot with six shots, that's a potential of 768 damage before a single reload is necessary. One of the biggest things one will notice about this gun is that it hits hard. 128 damage is not a damage number you want to mess around with when looking at taking damage from a weapon, especially if you're a light or medium player. However, the chunky damage of this gun comes at a dramatic cost. Aim. In order to pull off a full damage shot, you're going to have to hit a near perfectly centered shot on your target. And pulling off a shot that is not centered will lead you to hit damage numbers like 96, or in the 60s, or even worse, the dreaded 16. In all honesty, if you're familiar with the game Apex Legends, hitting 16 with the 1887 is the equivalent of hitting a 9 with the Peacekeeper. It just doesn't feel good. And much like Apex, if you hit a 16 with the 1887, there's a big chance your opponent has done significantly more damage to you compared to what you dealt to them. And when you mix that with the fact that the 128 damage is only a damage number that can be achieved in its most effective range with the most perfectly landed shot, that big shiny number really starts to look not as crazy. In fact, it becomes more of a number you have to strive to constantly achieve and hit lest you be rolled by literally anything else in the game. So to combat this, unless you plan on only hitting the nuttiest of 128 damage shots, I put together some key parts of the 1887 playstyle to help make up for the lack of damage that the 1887 can produce. Arena carryables do a solid 50 damage when directly thrown at an enemy, and can even do more damage if they are the type to explode. The best arena carryables for damage, for me at least, are gas barrels. Gas barrels not only detonate off a perfect shot of the 1887 at optimal range, but always leave behind a toxic cloud that will cover enemies, forcing them to disperse while they take damage from the gas. Gas barrels pretty much function the same way as gas grenades, but with a twist. They need to take enough damage in order to fully detonate, or you need to set them off and let them drain. Once the toxic gas is dispersed on your enemies, it enables you to pop shots at them while they retreat out of the gas. Should they try to stay in place and fight, you can also take a shot and choose not to fire any further until you know they're repositioning out of the gas, thus enabling you to fire at them in an exposed state. If they choose to stay in the gas, they will simply succumb to it and grant you a rather free elimination. Melees are an important and obvious choice, but are really something to be noted since they are the most obvious choice that anybody could think of. Melees do a surprising 40 damage per hit, and with an 1887, that's a perfect damage threshold to finish off a light should you hit a 128 damage shot on them. With only 22 health left, a melee is the perfect damage to secure the kill, even if they just begin to heal. Even two melees and two 96 damage shots would be enough to take down a medium if you're not hitting the most crisp shots. In my case, I use Fragmentation Mines, or Explosive Mines. Mines are great options because they force your enemies to acknowledge them in the fight should they want to push you. If they push, they take a big chunk of damage or even die if you stack two mines together. You can also frisbee the mines into unsuspecting teams and get free damage or even a kill with the mines. In all honesty, whatever offensive utility you prefer will do the trick, so long as you consistently find yourself doing damage with it. This is going to sound obvious, 
but utilizing cover as much as you can, whether that be peeking from cover after each shot, or crouching behind an object, hiding behind a shield, or just simply using movement to swing in and out, proper cover utilization is an important part of using the Model 1887. This is because, as previously mentioned, the fire rate of the 1887 is rather slow, thus making the downtime between each shot rather brutal. And when you consider that in the finals there are a plethora of high damage, low TTK, full auto or even fast and spammable semi-auto options, Having a slow fire rate can be quite nerve wracking. There is a genuine understanding that missing one shot can easily mean death since there is a big chance that if you miss said shot, you will not be able to fire off another shot before death. It's extremely punishing to miss a shot with the 1887, so utilizing cover to minimize the damage you take in between shots is a big part of the 1887 playstyle. Movement can and should be a key component of the Model 1887 playstyle, in my opinion. Understanding proper movement in the finals will allow you to take a multitude of different angles and positioning that will ultimately enable you to take better fights with the 1887, or any gun for that matter. Because the 1887 is slow, it only makes sense to develop a playstyle that enables you to be fast to compensate and make up for the slowness and the sluggishness that the 1887 brings. Movement guides exist everywhere, on my channel and a plethora of others. Okay. Hell, just... you could type the finals movement and find enough results until you feel you understand all movement in the finals. But the movement I recommend learning the most is my technique. This technique is called slide hopping. Slide hopping can be seen in a bit more detail in my movement guide here, but is ultimately a way to weave in and out of cover or completely around your enemy while providing a much harder to hit hitbox. Slide hopping is an action that revolves around you having toggle sprint on a key you can easily press. From there, you simply turn to the direction you want to slide hop in, Q or proc sprint, take a couple steps, press crouch to initiate sliding, turn or flick to a target of your choice, take a shot, finish the slide sequence, and jump in a direction of your choice at the end of the slide. This direction can be back the way you came, north, south, east, west, wherever. The direction you go after your slide is entirely up to you. With slide hop utilization and overall proper movement utilization, you will be able to easily bob and weave around cover, hop from place to place, and take different and unique fights that will be harder for your opponents to deal with. These five key playstyle components can easily help make up for the lack of constant DPS that the 1887 brings. You'll find that every amount of damage really adds up when you're using the 1887. And the more preemptive damage you do to the target, the easier it is to take them down with the slow but heavy hitting weapon. So how do I imagine the meta viability of the 1887? There's tons of guns in the finals. Everybody has their own opinion on them, but there's only typically quite a few weapons in the meta. For heavy, we have the Lewis gun or the auto shotgun. For medium, we have the F car, and for light, we have the XP-54, as well as the LH-1. Where does the Model 1887 fit in the meta? Well, if I had to base it off my own playstyle, we can all see that I take on a very pseudo-light approach to the gun. The 1887 is not really a supporting role weapon, in my opinion. In the current meta, we see there is a very high concentration of heavies lurking around. The comp of medium heavy heavy, where the medium in this comp is a heel beam medium that is typically running an F car or an AK, is a rather supporting role that does not fit the Model 1887. The Model 1887 isn't a rooftop camping weapon. It is more of a poke happy weapon that thrives off of being in the kill role, much like the light position or the light class. The Model 1887 is great at securing kills with its high burst potential, or it's great at starting off fights with a heavy hit of damage. If I had to recommend a composition for it, I would recommend medium, medium, heavy, where the model 1887 medium functions in a similar way to the light player does in medium, heavy, light. In terms of specialization recommendations with the model 1887, I recommend the dematerializer, as it will enable you to take 
different angles and surprise your foes with a quick burst of damage. A key part of the dematerializer is understanding that every wall is a potential angle or an entrance. So it's important to know that with the dematerializer and the 1887, you should always be looking to take different angles that you can surprise your enemy with to deal a high burst damage before you jump in for the kill. This is why the dematerializer and the 1887 are a match made in heaven. But with all that being said, that concludes my guide. Thank you so much for watching and peace. That's so goofy.